that it will uh, uh, identify and give an alarm whenever the heartbeat stops or so, uh, then you can uh, attend to the patient. Uh, can monitor vital signs uh, at specified uh, intervals, uh, smart garments I mean. Can alert uh, healthcare professionals in case of abnormal readings and can indicate nature, location and severity of injury in all cases uh, in case of fall. Uh, can help remote diagnosis and possibility healthcare uh, advice and delivery. Now these uh, are not only uh, <coughs> applicable to uh, patients, you can really apply it to the defense industry which is having a serious uh, consideration of this one mm -hmm. and a soldier is injured on the battlefield. Uh, the smart test can exactly tell you that uh, uh, where the injury is, what kind of uh, severity it has and how much, uh, uh, what kind of uh, help is needed. So we can apply the same concept to patients, uh, especially the homebound patients where vital signs can be monitored and relate to uh, some central station. Okay, <clears throat> smart houses. Uh, this is a, a, a picture I have taken from IEEE uh, Spectrum magazine. In, there is a house uh, which, is, uh, which has gadgets uh, on almost all uh, items like uh, utensils, your dresses, your bed, uh, uh, etc. And it can monitor all the things that uh, you are doing. You can, uh, you can actually remotely collect all the information from a homebound patient that how much fluid has been consumed, uh, whether how much uh, sleep the person has had on the bed and how much time it spends on the uh, uh, watching the TV or so or how much uh, uh, time uh, person sat on the dining table and so on. Uh, and not only that, it can also do other things, mundane things like uh, people who have uh, uh, memory problems, it can constantly monitor the patients to, uh, uh, to take the medication and the dose at the right time. These technologies already exist. These are not new technologies. These are already e exist, and the matter of it's just a matter of implementation. RFIDs uh, can be used for carrying your health record uh, wherever you go. They are becoming uh, very, very powerful devices. And here are uh, some of the uh, uh, actually two MDs uh, injecting uh, RFIDs for experimental purposes and so on. So as soon as you have an RFID and all the healthcare record is in your uh, 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 in your possession, you walk into the office of a doctor, and all you have to do is just scan the RFID, and uh, 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 they will have the information about you. Uh, or people who are disabled, you can implant the, implant the RFIDs in their hands or shoulders, and program them so that as they approach their car or approach their uh, entrance, uh, uh, their house, the locks will uh, uh, open and they don't have to struggle uh, doing these little things. Uh, <clears throat> healthcare information man management, healthcare records, uh, prevention of diseases, etc. That uh, I mean, information about healthcare can really be managed, and uh, you can uh, uh, perform the data mining to extract the information from it for uh, meaningful purposes. Uh, one thing that uh, we are thinking at uh, uh, FAU is that if this information can be collected over a period of time uh, and keeping the uh, 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 keeping information about uh, uh, what kind of things they eat and what kind of things they do physically and so on, and if once we know, once we relate that pattern with the health status of individuals, then we can apply those things at a younger generation and uh, uh, tell them that well, this is really this is going to work for you if you do these kind of things. You will be a healthy. Uh, you will live uh, live a healthy life. So we can raise, uh, we can manipulate or extract useful information and start applying to younger generations so that they don't run into the things that uh, uh, our older generations did. Rehabilitation and so on. Remote monitoring of patients, uh, uh, monitoring vital signs and home homebound uh, patients, and uh, identifying the uh, criticality of information and taking appropriate information. People are homebound. You can measure their uh, glucose level, et cetera, or vital signs and relate to a central station. And if the information is really critical, uh, then uh, a medical uh, help can be provided. OK. Uh, simulations uh, uh, is another tool that uh, can be very helpful in training and uh, uh, those things and this already being used. The remote surgeries, as I mentioned, it is still in fancy, but as I mentioned, that communication technology is uh, reaching a point that we can have serious uh, experimentation with that. And uh, uh, before it becomes real common, uh, it will take a little bit of more time, but that can certainly 
So, uh, summarize uh, uh, the technologies and healthcare are not integrated nearly to the level as it can be even with the existing technologies today. So, there is a tremendous potential to use technologies for improving healthcare access, delivery, and improve the quality of life, and of course, reduce cost. Uh, next will be uh, Dr. Gary Margulies from Nova Southeastern. Okay. Oh, I want to uh, be sure to thank Jane Teague for inviting me uh, today. And I can't tell you it's a great pleasure to see so many familiar faces and friends and colleagues uh, here at this meeting. It's a perfect size, I think, for really good communications. I did want to mention that in my uh, new role, I'm taking care of the uh, basic research and applied research and clinical research, um, the commercial research, and also the uh, new collaborative research building, which includes an incubator. I, I have to say in my uh, little bit of reciprocal, my one year of interaction with Dr. Charno, uh, was a uh, good preparation for that level of activity and I have an open conduit and a welcome to call any time which is very good so it's good to have connections so close to home. Uh, I did want to mention a little bit about NSU from a big picture uh, because a lot of what they do there in computer science is involved with the biomedical engineering and the bioscience activities and the computer science school there is rather large and people may not know but there's currently 27,000 students there and there's campuses throughout the United States and throughout the world and there's a great deal of distance learning which makes it the largest private school in the state of Florida, but also the sixth largest private school in the United States. And there's plans to uh, increase that significantly. So the education component is uh, very strong. Uh, the clinical component is also quite strong in many areas. And just the NSU clinicians alone are seeing about 350,000 patients, and that doesn't include all of the patients that are seen in the community hospitals with their relationships with Broward County. Uh, I wanted to mention, too, a few of the um, projects that are going on that are synergistic with and perhaps complementary with some of the activities going on with the cluster now that I consider to go from a homestead all the way to Jupiter. Uh, our cluster seems to look a little bit more like a cigar, but it's still going to be a cluster and we're all getting connected whether we like it or not. It's a, it's a good thing and the distances are only probably 90 miles. Uh, but one is in the uh, cancer area where it was a joint activity with Georgetown University and they used um, combinatorial chemistry and computer modeling to develop small molecules that are VEGF inhibitors. So people here know about Avastin and what Avastin can do and how effective it is. But people here also know about the expense of a molecule like that and the potential toxicity and the potential side effects. So having a small molecule that does something similar to that is important. And they used computers to screen and develop uh, 10,000 compounds, and they're down to 50 compounds now. And of those 50, it seems that 10 are quite effective, and that's a great activity. And we're talking to uh, corporations, but also people at the University of Miami about taking that forward. Uh, the other activity I wanted to mention is in the regenerative medicine area, and uh, Dr. Murray has a poster here today with Dr. Franklin Garcia Godoy, and I think that that's an important project where they're using uh, the School of Dentistry, which is one of only 56 in the United States, and I think the uh, very large one. Uh, the dental clinic sees over 100,000 patients a year, but. Uh, this stem cell activity is for uh, hard tissue and both soft tissue regeneration and the ac activity itself and the applications of it would be in orthopedic as well for bony defects. 